there are a couple of things that everyone should know when it comes to temporary disability benefits. So it doesn't necessarily have to be work related, although I'm going to touch on that. Uh, but this would be, you know, uh, I'll give you the example, uh, I'm hanging uh, lights from the roof and I fall and I break my leg. That has never happened to me, although there have been times where I have, it's gotten a little close to falling, <laughs> uh, being the one who gets on the roof every year. Um, but, but in all seriousness, I want to discuss it from the standpoint of both work-related uh, and non-work-related um, um, uh, disability uh, opportunities. So, so let's do let's do uh, workers' compensation first. Um, that's that's we're going to start with that. So, if I am hurt and I am out of work or will be out of work for more than seven days, then I am entitled to receive. Uh, workers' compensation, temporary disability benefits. So the title, though, is temporary total disability benefits. I am temporarily totally disabled. So that means that if I get hurt at work and I can't work at all, per the doctor, then I can't work at all. So I've had questions that have come up where somebody says, well, I can't work my full-time job, which is where I've gotten injured, but I have this really cushy light time, uh, light duty gig is a part-time gig. Can I still do that? And the answer is no. So that's, but, but we're going to talk about what you can do in a minute. So, but you cannot work, uh, even if the full-time job you can't do, you can't work a light duty part-time job because you are temporarily totally disabled. So that's workers' comp. They're going to pay you, like I said, 70% of your gross weekly wage, right? So, but what does that mean? What is gross weekly wage? Well, first, the first way that they try and capture that is they look back 26 weeks or six months prior to the work accident. And they say, okay, what was your average gross weekly wage for those 26 weeks? We're going to add them up, divide by 26, and we're going to get your average weekly wage, which is, a fine way to do it. But if you have only worked 10 weeks, you just started, how do they calculate that? They're not going to take, you know, 16 weeks of zero and add that to the mix. One of the ways you can do it is take the 10 weeks, add it up by 10, divide by 10. That's one way. But the better way to do it is just to look at what your um, hourly wage would be and then calculate that based on a 40 hour uh, work week. So, and to get to that gross weekly wage. And then the 70% is tax free, but it's based on that gross uh, average weekly wage. Now, if you get hurt on your part-time gig, so if you get hurt on the part-time job, um, how do you calculate you know, what you're gonna get? Because maybe you only get paid 150 bucks a week. In that scenario, what you can do is one of two things, A, you can try and reconstruct the wage to equal over a 40 hour work week, or there is a minimum every year that workers comp will have to pay. So if for example, you're only getting paid $150 a week on your part-time gig, the minimum, so if you're out of work, workers comp in the year of 2022, I think the minimum is up to like $264 a week. So that's what you're going to get paid tax-free from workers' comp. Now, that's still going to be problematic because you are temporarily totally disabled, so you can't do your full-time job. So that's going to obviously create a financial hardship. But that's workers' compensation temporary disability. So if I am at home or if for some reason I get hurt and it's not work-related, how do I get paid? Well, if the employer uh, offers short-term disability uh, insurance, then you would be eligible to apply for and receive short-term disability through the employer. So that's one way. Um, if the employer does not offer the short or private short-term disability plan, then you are eligible to receive the or apply for new state of New Jersey or state temporary disability benefits. So 
But that application process, which used to be pretty straightforward because they used to have enough staff down at the state that actually did the job, uh, is very difficult now because, first of all, everything's online. So you have to do the application online. You have to submit everything. Then you have to make sure that you're getting the medical documentation to state disability. And quite frankly, it sort of falls into abyss because unless you call at 730 in the morning and you by accident get somebody to actually answer the phone, um, it's very difficult to try and get an answer when it comes to the state. But state temporary disability, um, it, depending on how long you've been contributing, uh, can pay up to 26 weeks of benefits or six months. So 26 weeks of benefits, six months, uh, you would get paid. Um, and I think the maximum these days is somewhere a little over $600 a week from state temporary disability. Now, when that comes into play, right, is first, if you are sick or if you have a disability because of a non-work-related event and you can't go to work, then you apply for state temporary disability. Again, if if your job has the private plan, you don't have to go through the state, you use the private insurance. But if your job doesn't have a private short-term disability plan, then you go through the state of New Jersey. So when I say go through, you apply for the state temporary disability benefits, okay? So then the next step in that process is they're gonna pay you out for 26 weeks, okay? And then depending if your job has long-term disability, they may have a long-term disability policy, so you apply for that. Or if not, then you would have to apply for Social Security disability. Again, depending on how long you're going to be out of work. If it's a broken leg, you know, maybe you're going to only be out of work for three or four months. So you should be OK. Um, but certainly that's, you know, case by case by case. Right. 